Okay, we'll do a little birdhouse here. Um, normally I have this big bucket of little bits and pieces. So I've got box elder, this is a piece of cherry, some Russian olive, uh, there's probably some pine mixed in, uh, cottonwood, just poplar, um, whatever, right? So what I do is I've got this that's left over from cutting out a, a, a bowl blank. Um, so I'll just cut the square out of this and then just put the rest in the burn pile. But normally a lot of people just throw this directly into the uh, uh, fireplace, but hey, I can still get a birdhouse out of here, so I'll take what I can out of there that ends up in a bucket. So it's usually what I do when I make my bowl blanks. Now over here at the drill press, I have a little piece of cherry in here, uh, uh, these cheap wood vice and I've got the stop here so I've got an inch no I don't I've got a lot more than an inch so I'll set this so about an inch travel right so I know how deep that's gonna go um, and what I'll do because they're all different lengths is I'll bring the base up to the drill bit instead of the other way that way I don't have to keep measuring once I get up to where the Forstner bit scrapes on the top, I know then if I pull it down, I'm at my max. <clears throat> okay, so bring this up. Okay, it's starting to scrape, so now we plunge down. Actually, doesn't smell too bad. Um, not like some of the other wood. Well, it looks like. I think that's probably gone. So normally what I do is I'll do the whole box at once. And so we have this little marking tool and I'll use the side that has the two points. This, the top point will be is set for about three quarters of an inch down and that'll be where the birdhouse hole goes. And then the next one down is where the hole for the perch goes. So I just scratch those on there. You can see there's a scratch there, there. So now what we'll do is to the quarter inch. I say I usually do these all in a big batch, but we're just going to do a one-off here. So. What I'm going to do is try to get in the center of the hole. I know it's just going to eyeball it because it doesn't have to be perfect, at least for me. So there's our hole through. We do this now because if we do it um, after we've turned this, it's round, it's hard to deal with, and uh, I don't know, this just works better. So 
So we got a, that was a quarter inch. This is an eighth inch bit. And now this I do want, it's nice if it's right there. Okay. Now, no, know if you, you can see, but right down in here, the bottom of that bit's right on the bottom of our hole, which pushes us right at an inch. So the, now, the nice thing is, while this is on the lathe, we know exactly where the bottom of this internal hole is here. And so we know we can't go too skinny he, until we get past this point. So that's got that. Okay, over here at the lathe, we'll set up a oh, scroll chuck here. Oh, nice and tight. And I have this little special jam chuck. Um, when I made it, you know, there's only two sizes in making tenons. There's two big and two small, and we ended up with two small. So I built it back up with uh, some blue tape or masking tape. Works fantastic. We'll take our little blank here, and we'll twist that guy on. That's nice and solid. There we go. Okay, we have our little piece of cherry mounted. Um, everything spins fine. And what I'm going to do is I like to use my bowl gouge. So that's what we're going to do. Looks like the speed range is about where I want it. Running around 2,000 RPMs. It's kind of small diameter, so... Guessing right around in there is probably the bottom. Good. Turn off, see what we see anything interesting going on in the grain. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> so, you know, this hole here is right about the bottom. So, I'm actually, I need to start turning about in here. I think what we'll do is round and then do just a tiny bit of a finial on there. So let's go ahead and take it down some more. I'm using a bit of the wing here. A lot like you would a skew. You see the shavings come off a lot like you'd see with a skew. And it's really smooth. You see where I'm at. Okay, so I can come to about here. The other thing I like about bowl gouge, I can use this part a lot like I would a spindle gouge as well. So that's kind of my go-to tool because I can do so many different things with just the one tool.
right now. I could go ahead and finish off the bottom, drill a little hole and add a finial, which is something I would probably do if this were a shorter blank. <clears throat> and then this is a little round gouge I made out of uh, some drill stock. And I really like it for doing these small details. Make a little cove around this stone. 